Hello traders and welcome to a new video on tracking large traders on Binance futures and taking advantage of them. So this is going to be another video on how can we make money in the short and the medium term by taking advantage of whales. Let's dive in. So first of all, I want to talk about supply demand equilibrium. It's not too complicated. Just imagine it that uh, the market's in a period of consolidation, let's say on the five minute candlestick, not much is happening. Then out of nowhere, a large buyer comes in and begins market buying, bidding up, and just the price just erupts higher. That tends to happen when a large short wants to exit by buying or a large long wants to enter by, um, by rampantly buying. Now often when this does happen, the market is going to go in their favor initially. If you're buying to open a long position, when you continue to buy, you know the market is going to go in your favor for that for that moment in time. That's because there's a large injection of demand, a large uh, a lot of demand coming in. However, the very second that that trader stops doing that, stops buying, what can tend to happen is price can reverse and go right back to supply demand equilibrium. So what that basically means is we can track where large whales are entering and exiting, and then take advantage of them right at the very moment they stop buying or selling. Here's some examples. First of all, before we go into the examples, what you can see here is the market we're going to track today is Binance Futures BTC USDT. Reason I'm doing that is it holds about seven, almost 70% of all derivatives volume. So tracking this one market is by far the most important thing, um, and the most important Bitcoin market that you probably should be tracking. On TradingView, it's BTC USDT PERP. Uh, perp. And it has about 18, 19 billion dollars today. Uh, it, it already went up in 24 hour volume. So if you're not looking at this, I think that you're definitely making a mistake. All right, so now tracking BTC USDT, this is what I'm talking about when I say supply demand, equilibrium, and consolidation. Not much I have to really talk about. Now let's talk about this. So imagine that Bitcoin is just fluctuating before, you know, let's say fluctuating two, 300 bucks going up and down, just nothing's happening. Then out of nowhere, a large seller comes in pushing that price lower and lower with those red bars that you can see there being large limit sell orders. And also imagine that many market sells are also hitting bids as well. So someone's very, you know, someone's really trying to sell and selling in mass, let's say with um, thousands of Bitcoin. When this happens, uh, of course, the price is probably gonna fall. However, what ends up eventually happening is there gets to be a point typically where the large seller has just run out of selling. Because no individual buyer or no individual seller as rich as they might be can do this forever. No one can just continue to sell off the market. No one person individually can just continue selling. You know, just sell, 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 sell. At one point, they are gonna have to stop. And when they do stop, that exact moment, typically what happens is price goes right back up to where it was before or even higher sometimes. So here are some really cool examples of that that I will show you. Look here, we can see that the market is in equilibrium. And all I need to tell you is that uh, the two indicators we're gonna be talking about today, I'm actually gonna do this so that we can uh, see, a little, you guys can see a little bit better, are the open interest, which I don't think needs too much explaining, just positions, and the top trader long short positions on Binance. Why are we looking at that? This shows the top 20% of positions on BTC USDT perp. So of all of the accounts that are that have, you know, are, are either long or short on Binance Futures BTC, it looks at the top 20% of the largest positions and tells us how many of them are long and how many of them are short. Now when this number rises, that means that there are more longs entering, more shorts exiting. When this number falls, that means there are more longs exiting and more shorts entering. Now, here's a kind of pattern that will probably uh, seem kind of cool to you guys. What ends up happening here is out of nowhere, um, price just declines rapidly. You know, what we do see before is that positions are getting a little bit more long. It's at about 1.14. And then you can see that the price dumps 4%. Now, after the, the price dumps 4%, if you look on the bottom far right side, what you can see is that the top trader long short positions goes down up a fair amount. With a market of 18 billion and an open interest of 74,000 Bitcoin, which is insane, it's a lot of money. Um, these numbers really do mean a lot. 
And when top traders drops that much, that's really telling me that whoever was really exiting their long, i.e. open interest dropping, has probably uh, finished doing so. And that's that big, big drop in um, the top traders long positions, long short positions. Now what we see is far more interesting. Right after the top trader positions goes down, that's a pretty good buy signal. And then what, what do we see? Well, then what we see is that price spikes right back up. And why does price buy out, spike up? Well, a, a few reasons. One of them being, you'll also notice that top trader positions also spikes up. That's a really simple sign that the people who are buying with those large um, buy wicks, as you can see, uh, upward wicks, these are just large buyers who are entering the market. Now, the very second that these buyers kind of pump the brakes, i.e., you know, the top traders' positions stops going higher, then the market falls. What happened in all of this in short? Well, basically what happened is the market declined when a large long wanted to exit. And we can see that from the top traders on Binance futures dropping uh, pretty dramatically. Then we see a massive increase, a very, very large increase in um, the top positions on Binance going very much long at about 9 a.m. And when this happens, the, the price spikes upward. And then after they stop buying, price goes down. So I've found from backtesting that historically on BTC USDT on Binance Futures, it's typically better to fade these moves. What I mean by that is when I see a large drop in the top positions, that's indicating to me that a large trader is either selling their long or adding trying short. More often than not, that's actually been a good buy sign. And when it rapidly rises, that's typically been a pretty good sign to short. Again, the reason being guys, is that this buyer can only buy for, for so long. And when they push that market up way higher than it, it, it was before, way higher than it was at equilibrium, the very second that they stop doing that, you know, the, the market's like a rubber band. It just comes right back. So here's another example of another coin, Gala. This one is, I think, the third or fourth highest volume on Binance Futures and a lot of really cool things going on with it. I want you guys to focus on 18 o'clock on the 8th. If you see 18 o'clock on the 8th, what we can see is price is just skyrocketing higher. You know, it goes up to 0.39. Now, a lot of traders will probably be like, with all this volatility on Gala or Gala, do I long, do I short? You know, what do we do here? Well, we can see that there's a massive increase in top uh, trader positions from 1.11 to 1.21. That's insane. That means that a lot of positions are entering long. And we can also see open interest rising, indicating that there's a large long who just had entered. Now, when I see a large long who had just entered and now has finished buying, that is such a good time to sell. Because you'll notice if you had shorted right after that spike in top positions um, spikes, then uh, price just collapses. Price falls a fair amount. And then look at that sell off on the far right part of the screen where open interest drops almost the same amount that open interest rose before. So, you know, too long didn't hear, too long didn't hear, TLDR basically here, guys, is we, we see a large rise in the top positions. Um, price tops out because it's like just too much demand. And then price sells off, goes back to equilibrium, and then sells off a little bit more. Final example is on AVAX. This one is incredibly dramatic um, and wild. Uh, I want you to notice the wick lower and the little tiny sell off that happens at 18 o'clock. There's a large seller, or, or there, there's a large long that exits, and when that long exits, you know the price begins to go a little bit lower, pushes lower and lower, and then they stop selling, they stop exiting, and price just whips right higher. Now the interesting thing is, there's also a very large open interest increase, hundreds of thousands of AVAX. So with those millions and tens of millions of dollars of large positions going along, they buy rampantly, lots of buying to go long. And the very second that they you know, stop buying, i.e. that the top position stops going higher and open interest stops rising, price collapses. Because again, you can only push the price so high. You know, Even if you're buying with tens of millions of dollars, sure, the price will spike. But what do you think is going to happen to you when you stop buying? Do you think you just spurred on other buyers to continue to buy? Or do you think that um, you're now encouraging people to sell elevated prices? Typically, what I've noticed with this kind of system is that when one person tries to push the market so far one way, people typically reverse that trend or counter trade that person pretty quickly. You know, an example like this, if you're looking at this market and you're long and you see the price go from 84 up to like 93, 
I mean, with that much buying, a lot of people will probably be inclined to sell. Uh, so that's probably what ended up happening here is someone pushed up way higher than it was at equilibrium and then price had too much demand and the uh, demand sold off until we got back to supply demand equilibrium. All right, so that was a lot of economics and just you know talking about the kind of how that works. But you can see here, this is coin glass. Everything that you're looking at is completely free. You know, all of this of course is, uh, is free. So now I will come back here. So what we can see here, a few examples uh, that, that did work pretty well is again, I, I think I had mentioned this before. Uh, yeah, I think I did mention this before. We can see here, this was the large rise. We see a large increase in um, long positions go from 1.13 to about 1.18, pretty dramatic rise. And then, uh, yeah, price just kind of falls apart there. And again, another, another time it happened was pretty good here. You can see that a large trader exited right here. I see that from an open interest fall and from this dropping, telling me that a long had exited a large long was exiting right here. The very second they stop exiting, you know, price rises. And you can see after price rose, then they, they entered again, I guess. Uh, I don't really know why, but then uh, then price fell right after they entered. Yeah, I mean, the market hates whales more than you might think. The market trades against whales so much more than people actually think. So many people have this conspiracy theory that the whales are pushing price here or there. It's kind of true, but... What's really happening is individual actors are pushing the price one way or another with hundreds of millions or billions or tens of millions of dollars. And the very second they stop doing that, almost always the price reverses because the price can only, you know, it can't go up or down forever. It's just, it's impossible actually. Uh, another example here, you know, large drop, we want to buy that. Um, here would have been a good time to short, of course. Yeah. And then his historical examples, Usually I would wanna do this for more, anything like very dramatic, like or large rises or large drops. Um, but you know, of course that, that would kind of be up to you in your own style. But typically when I see a large open interest increase and I see a large increase or decrease in the top positions, that indicates me to typically counter trade uh, those guys. A beautiful, beautiful best example of the day is right here. Uh, what's happening? We're at equilibrium here. Supply demand are about equal. I think everyone can agree at about 37,900, 37,800, nothing happening. Price spikes higher because you can see clearly this was not uh, a bunch of people buying, this was a few people buying or one guy buying. Uh, one guy just buys like crazy, goes long, and we have a large open interest increase as this guy just buys as much as he possibly can. Um, on this volume candle right here, it's $440 million on that candle right there. So this could be just a you know half a billion uh, long position just buys as much as they can. What happens? The buyer stops buying, as you can see here, it flats and then price just falls because you're pushing price way beyond its supply demand equilibrium. And uh, he might have exited right here at a loss. Ouch. So, yeah, that's just an example of kind of cool things you can do to counter trade large whales. Be careful with this. And it is best paired when open interest is increasing because then you know that that position is opening and then eventually they might have to close it. Um, also, do your own discretion, of course, because you know nothing's foolproof, nothing works 100% of the time. This is just something I like to do to gauge supply demand and to see, hey, price just rose a fair amount and we see that it's mostly just very large buyers buying. Well, when they stop buying, you know, what do you think is going to happen? Or something like this. This example is pretty bad, pretty awful example, actually, but you know, um, I think you guys get the point. I don't think I have to show every one of them. I mean, this one's the best, maybe the second best one I've seen, next to the one before. Uh, open interest increases, uh, positions go from 1.11 down to 1.0, like what, eight or nine? Uh, a lot of people are going short, clearly. A lot of large traders are going short because open interest rose and this fell. And this guy, probably one person, just sold as many, short as many Bitcoin as he possibly could. And then the very second he stops, price just goes right back up to equilibrium to where it was before because one person can't really alter the market as much as you might think. It's a collection of market participants and that's what you need to focus on. So with that, that's gonna be it for this video. Track whales, but don't think that they're someone you should always follow. A lot of the times you wanna look for when they stop buying to short, when they stop um, selling to long and it can give you pretty favorable risk reward. Back test it, look it over and I'm gonna link this so you guys can get this all for free. Happy trading, and I'll see you in the next one.